much. Uh, the last uh, talk uh, who separates us uh, from lunch uh, is uh, going to be by uh, Dr. Uh, Rivka Ophir, and she will talk about desert plants, green pesticides, and novel metabolites for drug discovery. Okay. Th thank you very much. I'm going to share with you in short terms uh, how we try to exploit the novel uh, chemistry of a uh, desert plant trying to do it uh, from basic to transitional. Um, and be, uh, we, we, we want to tackle two areas, agriculture uh, diseases and human diseases. I share my time between the Dead Sea Science Center and Ben Gurion University. So basically we have a library of desert plant collected from the Red Sea to the Dead Sea, around 250 plants in different plants, and uh, we use them as a library of chemicals. One of the plants, which is like, I call it masada plant, is the Frankistress tree or Mor and Levona. I just mentioned it because it somehow respects the place where we are sitting now, because people sometimes claim that the war on masada was based who will have uh, enforce the, will enforce the um, uh, activity of these plants. And, and, mm, and, one minute, this, pl no, again. I manage it there, but no, ah. Uh, this, this plant started as religious ritual perfume and in the, in the last few years, it became and shown to be active in animal models of bladder regeneration and cancer. And basically, we and some friend of mine from the world call it a plant with artificial intelligence, because basically the results were found in in vivo uh, models. So what we are doing with the Plants. And as I said, I have the hypothesis that there is a desert chemistry which really uh, may, we may benefit from the plants. And basically, we take the plants, create a crude extract, and try to do biological activity. And then, when we find something interesting, we try to find the pure compound again, check it in the uh, essay of the biological, uh, biological essay. And in the end, we want to, of course, to know the molecular structure and see whether the compound should be used as it is or maybe modified. So if we look on agriculture, we try to tackle a plant diseases with plant material, looking for green chemistry. Why I call it green? Because I hope it will be more safe than the regular pesticide. And we screen different diseases as nematode, fungi, and weeds. And everything started when the use of methyl bromide was uh, not permitted anymore. I just want to mention that the, my branch, we are sitting in a place where we host also the agricultural R&D, so it really enables us to ask this type of question. And again, we are doing activity-guided fractionation, trying to find, in the end, the uh, desert-resulted uh, plant uh, fungicide. In the lab, what we do, basically, we put the fungi on the plate, make like a disc assay, like, pe like people do for antibiotics, and look for whether we can find something that will inhibit. This is how fungi grow on a, on a plate very happily. And when we find something active and we put the fungi, it just doesn't go, grow. And if we use the wheat seeds as a model for bioherbicides, if we just put the seeds on water, we can see the germination and sometimes the growth. And if we find something which can be considered in the future as herbicide, and we put the, the seeds on this extract, we can see that it doesn't germinate. Sometimes it germinates, but just doesn't grow as a 
as a, sh a small plant. If we go to human diseases, ba basic basically we uh, screen the plants uh, if they have something that can fight cancer and we do the screening as a mechanism based, namely we want to find a plant that can kill ca uh, cancer cells but in a safe way. And the mechanism of genetic program of cell death, if one can activate it, then the death is much more health to the human body. And we have we screened several plants and really found um, some good activator. And I just give one example, a work that I'm proud to say done by master student Zainab Tayer from Jordan. She was with her for two, us with for two years. And uh, basically she was able to show that when we add asterisk, Astricos gravelus, which is Kochav Rechani, we all drink the tea of it when we go to the desert. Very fast, the cancer cells produce a free radicals just in minutes. We can see the yellow, uh, yellow results. But the um, end, the apoptosis or the safe death, started a little bit later, so like in hours. So in minutes, we get the, the free radicals, and uh, after the uh, free radical, we get the apoptosis uh, cell death. So this is an example, it's some, something that could maybe go from basic to translational, but you need to be very lucky to be able to do it. The second uh, kind of disease that we uh, that I studied with the uh, always collaboration with Professor Joel Cashman from Tel Aviv University and uh, Dr. Anat Elman from Vulcani Institute. Basically, we follow the, the system that brain disease or neurodegenerative disease can be explained by inflammation of brain cells. So we put brain cells, red brain cells in the disease do some inflammation protocol, LPS like Zevi um, said before, and then screen our desert plant, whether we can find some of them that inhibit the inflammation of the cells. This again can be considered in the future as something maybe beneficial to human being. In, uh, in our screen, we found a plant which a, cons a constitute of, of a very important uh, compound. And I wanted to have a lot of this plant. So I took the seeds from the desert and I gave it to our agriculture farm and really irrigated and has a lot of biomass. And then I got proof that the desert chemistry is really novel. And I got the answer that the, that the hypothesis of desert chemistry is really true. What we did, we wanted to understand why the desert plant really have the one important compound, and we compare it on the level of molecular uh, analysis, and we can see that if this is how all the genes of the plants are look like, in the desert, in the cultivated one, where we irrigate them, they look totally different. So there is a desert a stress-related signature of genes, namely there are different pathways which are a, a, a happened or act only in desert condition. And the way we, the scientists, look on it so if I look for the difference between wild type, namely desert and cultivated, I see that there are many, many, many difference. Each color uh, just uh, mentioned difference and the opposite around also. So there are uh, gene and proteins that are made only in the desert condition and some of them are made only in agriculture or irrigation condition. And we just need always to remember a very important thing that 10% of the desert plants content are metabolites. And metabolite, each one of them is basically can be lead for drug. 
So uh, just to end my uh, uh, presentation, basically uh, we take the desert uniqueness or novel to research and sometimes to the farm. And these are just few of the plants which are, I am more connected to them. Thank you very much. So um, I think we heard um, a lot. A wonderful area of how the environment and the, the microbiome and the, uh, and now you can see it even, and, and <laughs> That's the best, this is the our best rector. Slide. This is our rector of the university. Uh, so um, we heard how the uh, bacteria and uh, the minerals and um, the environment can help us. Uh, Zevi, I hope you'll bring some uh, wrinkles tomorrow, uh, some samples tomorrow to show us how to reduce wrinkles and how to make us happy. But now, seriously, um, uh, yeah, I mean, reduce the wrinkles and make you happy. That could uh, work for me. Uh, but but um, more than everything, I think you got, um, and, and I hope you did get some new ideas and new, um, you know, from your own area, new messages or new uh, thoughts. And I hope we'll uh, share them all in a very open discussion after lunch. So now we have a little bit shrink last, but it's one hour. And if you eat fast, you can go down. There are special, uh, special uh, uh, presentation of a simulation for earthquake. It's here, it's and, and, it, and in the center, there are things that you can put some... Uh, Virtual reality. Virtual, uh, virtual reality. I think the reality is enough complicated. We don't need the virtual, but enjoy. So enjoy lunch. Thank you. <laughs>